The Cookie Project is a social enterprise that employs people um, with disabilities. The reason we were motivated to create the Cookie Project um, was to help people with disabilities to gain employment who will find it very hard out there in the community to find work. <laughs> to be able to give Naho an opportunity to work is really special. Morning, babe. Morning. Morning. Time to wake up. Look at that beautiful day. Hey, okay? look at this beautiful day. Wow. Rise and shine. <laughs> My focus is on Naho and just getting her to excel more and more every single day. I always loved helping people. And then getting into caregiving um, with mental health, working in a mental health unit, was something I really enjoyed. It's not something I thought I would get into, but when I did get into it, it's something I've really enjoyed. I fostered four children with my partner back in 2013. Um, two boys, two girls, um, now teenagers, the oldest one, 22. So the boys now are at a different phase in life. They've, they're off doing other things, and now my focus is on Nao and just getting her to excel more and more every single day. There's so much more we need to learn about fetal alcohol. Um, there's not even a lot of specialists out there that know a lot about fetal alcohol or how to deal with dif different situations um, because so many young people are, in, you know, are so different with fetal alcohol. Like, my, my young people that I've adopted, um, they're so different, you know, the boys compared to my daughter. Um, just, yeah, both at different ends of the scale. Uh, morning, come back in. Let's get some porridge, Have some porridge for breakfast. Yeah, you go, you wanna do this? Pour some porridge in here. When I first met Naho, she was very quiet, um, very standoffish. What do you want to feed too? There you go, you want to do that? didn't like any sort of contact. Get your spoon. She never spoke a lot because her brothers and her sisters did all the talking for her for many years. Um, so she was, yeah, just very Ooh. quiet. Honestly, at days you couldn't get Boo out of her, um, not even a hello. And then slowly, after a few visits, uh, weekend visits, she um, got a lot closer. It took a while, but she started to excel um, quite fast um, because I guess she realised that this was her new whanau now. So did you enjoy going to auntie's yesterday? Mm. Catching up with auntie? What did you think of her new fuddy? <coughs> did you like her new fuddy? Mm. Auntie. Auntie Charlotte, did you like her new fuddy? Mm. It's flash, eh? I used to sit and talk a lot to her to get her to talk a lot more. Um, and even now, um, I, you know, when we're in the kitchen and things like that, we talk a lot. Awesome. Okay, let me put some banana on. Oh, nice. The moment we're teaching her a lot of independence, but she's learning so much from looking after herself more to cooking more. Got a glass of milk to help with your breakfast. Yeah. You gotta have a big heart, a lot of patience at times. Um, and really enjoy what you're doing, you know, and it's something I have enjoyed over the years. Cool. Yep. All right. I think it's hard for her, it is hard, but she is progressing slowly because there's so much for her to learn, but um, I'm really proud of where she is. So she's been cooking lots of different things from um, eggs. What else do you cook? Noodles. Noodles. What else do you like cooking? Sausages, eh? You love sausages. She's very good at cooking sausages now, eh? You like cooking sausages for dinner. Your cooking has definitely improved a lot, eh? Because you did cooking at school as well, eh? Give me what you cooked at school. Cake. Cake, yeah. What else did you cook? At school. Pancakes. Pancakes. Ah, what else do you like? What's another favourite meal? McDonald's. McDonald's. <laughs> what about what else do you like cooking? 
Chicken. Chicken. <laughs> When, when we started foster care, we got into that back in 2004. We actually left Auckland um, and decided to move down to Otorohonga and we bought a house down there, me and my partner, Chris. When I first met Chris, I was 27. He was actually a, a social worker for child, youth and family. Um, I love to help the young people. He just, yeah, um, he, when he needed to be firm, he would be firm but he just had so much love to give to these young people. I got to meet some of the young people that he looked after. I got to go to the complex at times. Um, so I got to learn, you know, different things then. Um, and then we were asked if we would um, care give for these um, young family, and we said, yeah, we'd, we'd do it. Um, we looked after the, the boys for a while, and then we met the sisters, and then from there, when their nanny was passing, she asked us if we would uh, actually adopt the young people. Um, and yeah, with open arms, we definitely yeah, took that opportunity to be able to give them a life. Um, yeah, and that was, it's been an amazing journey. It's quite amazing just seeing the transformation of the way she's grown up, yeah. It's, um, yeah, really cool. I love looking at, um... Get jammers. Get jammers, yeah. When are you going to get jammers? In the warehouse. Aye. i got a friend, <laughs> eh? Sorry? i got a friend. Who's your friend? Gypsy Santana. Ah, where do they live? Grahams Beach. Grahams Beach, yep. <laughs> what school do they go to? High school. Which school? What's it called? Pugu Goi. No. What's the other school? Park. Parkside. Aye. It's really good to see how far she's come. Someone very shy way back then to someone now. On the right day, she's just glowing and... Take my and, iPad? Yep. With me? Yep. Just glows, eh? We've been lots of places, eh? Where did we fly to? I got a plane. Yeah. Where did we fly to? Remember? Start with W. Well. Wellington. Ah, yes. I got the plane again. Yeah, and what happened when we went on the plane? What'd they give you? Card. Card, yeah. And what else did they give toy. you? Toy. Yeah. A toy what? Toy plane. Ah, yes. Um, around 2005, um, my partner at the time, Chris, um, was diagnosed with end stage renal failure time we had up to about eight young people in our care. Um, so living out in the country and being quite a distance from the hospital as well um, was very, very hard. Went through dialysis um, for 11 years. Me and the young people used to talk a lot about what was going to happen in the future, yeah, and knowing that Chris was passing. It was, it was tough. It was very tough. You know, they were my rock to get me through um, what I was going through. It was not easy at all, so, um, especially the day that he did pass, because he was in my arms, so, and that was, yeah, that was the hardest. If it wasn't for him being in my life, I would not have adopted these four children. I may not have ever met them. So to be able to, you know, um, have that life with Chris before he passed, um, and and put a lot of skills in and teach me a lot before he did pass it was yeah really incredible. Poor Naho um, has lost a lot of people lately. You know that she got very close to from her mum to her nan to her kuro to Chris. Just seeing the way she goes down and goes down fast. Naho believes everybody will be alive forever. Um, yeah, and doesn't understand when they do pass. To get someone like Naho through that, it's a lot of comforting, you know, a lot of reassurance. Um, just having a, a lot of time together, talking about things, you know, that people do pass, and at the end of the day, you know, they're, they're in a better place. Okay, cool. I'm going to get flicker. 
Morning, girls. <laughs> Um, get the saddle pads first underneath and then bring them around this side. Today we're out here at um, out in Puki at the farm where we graze our horses and we go riding. You can even tuck under here. It's really special and um, amazing to be able to spend time out here with Naho with the horses and get her to have the life that I used to have as a young one. Yeah, that's it. Put on that pad. Nice and slowly. Good girl. Just pull it forward a bit. Up over her back and then pull it forward. That side's over as well. I think that Naho can learn a lot from horses, um, a lot that she does already have, you know, with her kind nature. Um, but to be able to give that back to the horses is really beautiful. Yep, put that on her back. Yep, make sure this goes on the front, remember? Yep, good girl. Yep, just flick that strap over. Yep, okay, that's it. Cool, son. Yep, just put it nice and loose for you. Can you remember how to put this on? Yeah, pull that one up first with one, your right hand, that's your right hand, and then put your hand in there, in the bit, so she puts her bits in her mouth properly. Hold on, I'm just under this one. Yep, who's we darling? Yep. She's so yep. soft, just so loving, um, yeah, and very caring. Just leave the halter on because we're only gonna wander around the paddock. Yep, that's it. Yeah, just pull it out, just then. Yep. Sit tight, pull it down. Left one, yep. You darling, put it a bit further. Yep, a bit further. Yep, now pull yourself right up really high. Yep, that's it, swing your leg right around. Good girl, well done. Awesome. Okay, hold your reins. Right, just walking slowly. The fear of being round the horse, um, such a big animal. Um, a lot of people do find it very difficult. Um, but yeah, it's been quite natural for her. Um, even when she first came into our care, Naho um, been able to control them and for such a young person. I think she was, she would have been about 10, 11 when she uh, first started sort of working around the horses. Now you can see there's just no fear. Just her position and everything, the way she sits. Doing that, there you are. That's it. It's good healing. Job. It's good very job. healing. It's um, therapeutic. It's, it's good for the horse as well as Naho, you know, to be so calm. The horses definitely notice her delicate touch. Yeah. yeah, they do. Awesome, Naho. That's good riding. I'd like to see Naho uh, start going to do some shows and hand showing. <laughs> that was difficult. <laughs> that was difficult, wasn't it? <laughs> Gotta learn to really get your leg over. Bit of practice. So, I, I guess it's just about keep trying to guide them. You know, the same as when you're breaking in a horse, you know, you just keep keep at it. Um, and you, it's nice to finish on a good note than a bad note. Same with the kids. It's like when they settle at night, you know, whether we've had a, a good day out, a bad evening, but then settle to bed, you know, um, feeling feeling good, feeling loved, feeling happy. Um, so you wake up even feeling happy. She went really well. I'm so impressed. <laughs> really, really well. I can't wait to um, get her going a bit more by herself out in the dressage arena because um, I was really proud. There you go, babe. You give her a good brush. I think it's really calming for the horses because they love that gentle touch. They're not there to be abused, they're there to just be loved and looked after, and um, she really does show that love to them. It's just good for her, eh, you know, just to see her be able to do, you know, do this. And give the love that she's got to the horses is, is just beautiful. Uh, this was a really special place for Chris and I. Yeah, used to love coming out here and brings back some really amazing memories. Coming out here with the whole family. Let's go, 
We've got lots of favourite memories being out here at the beach with the kids. All of us just piling in the car and just coming out and bringing a big feed. Having a big feed and just collecting lots of cockles, going for a swim, um, especially on a really hot day. It's beautiful. Cool. This is good, eh? You ready to put cockles, eh? Yeah. You gonna eat them? Oh, yeah? Oh, cool. No, he doesn't like crabs, but she will get out there. She thinks there might be sharks out there, but I've told her it's too shallow, so there's no sharks. He still like going out there eh, and getting some cockles, and especially on a really nice day. Remember one of those really hot days, and we just go and lie in the water and just pick cockles floating around in the water. Remember that? Yeah. I think Naho finds peace and uh, the relaxation when she's collecting kaimana because of the sea air, you know, the water. Um, just somewhere where she can just kick back and relax and um, wander off up through the water and just do what she, yeah, what she enjoys. I think when she's putting her hands in that through the water, I just feel like it's just, you know, again, the relaxation and just feeling the sand in between your fingers and, you know, and, and especially when and getting those big, nice big cockles. So, yeah, which is, yeah, very healing. Yeah. It's a bit small today, eh? Look at those ones. Nah, coming along really well with her independence. Been able to do her own things a lot more now. Less rules for her. Talk to more friends. When, I, when she gets to the kitchen, she just lights up when she sees all the other bakers. So the cookie project came about when uh, I met Eric at a speaking engagement, and then a few weeks later, I gave him some of my cookies. Maureen, everyone, and welcome to our new home here at Eden Park. How's everyone feeling today? Yeah, yeah? awesome, fantastic. I told him about my children I adopted, and then, and then a few weeks later when I gave him some cookies, because we talked about I was looking for something to do with them, because I didn't know what to do for the future. So, yeah, so Eric suggested um, with the cookie, let's do something, and we've created the Cookie Project. The reason we were motivated to create the Cookie Project um, was to help people with disabilities to gain employment who will find it very hard out there in the community to find work. So we created the Cookie Project to help them in their future. Uh, Naho is very excited to be here in the new kitchen. Um, yes, yeah, she loves it, so she wants to be here every day. It was a small dream that has expanded so fast. It's really incredible. Essentially, Graham's excuse is making cookies, and he's been making cookies at the age of six. And uh, he was struggling at one stage in terms of looking after four children uh, for, that he adopted. So I thought, oh my gosh, not seeing a parent looking after you know, four adopted children, three other disability, how can I help this man? <laughs> and uh, until he, so he gave me his cookies two Christmas ago and uh, decided to go into an adventure with him and said, let's give it a go. And uh, that's how we really started off. Now, a lot of people start saying that cookie is the center of the cookie project, but to be honest, it's actually our bakers. They are the center of the cookie project. They are the core engine of the cookie project. I'm actually very thankful for my business partner, Graham, for allowing me to come into his life, to his children's life, to be able to understand a little bit more about the 25% of the New Zealand's population uh, that have a disability. We look at them at, uh, with their ability before their disability. So I'm more interested in what they can do as a person, what they can bring in terms of their strength before their disability and the limitations the perceived limitation that comes with it. You know, I'll be one of those people who are very shameful of myself two years ago, because when I um, look at people with disability, I'll be one of those people who tend to shy away because people tend to fear what they don't know. Ngaho is so special. Uh, when I first met her, she was so quiet, she would not, you would not even get a word out from her mouth, right? But through the Cookie Project, she has improved significantly by leaps and bounds. 
in terms of her social skills, in terms of communication skills, even just her people connection now is just absolutely amazing. And she has totally blossomed in this short space of time. Being in the kitchen has helped Naho learn structure. Taught her independence, eat a lot of independence. She spends a lot more time now by herself, learning to cook and that. She's been taught, but she likes to do a lot more herself now. So to see her become so more independent, um, it's great. Yeah, it's... Um, quite tough for her at times. But she tries, she tries very hard um, and she's learning a lot more. But a lot of young people with fetal alcohol find it so hard to read, write, interact with people. It's even very hard. I think fetal alcohol syndrome has you know, taught me that uh, disability can be complex. But if we truly, truly value diversity, um, everywhere, anywhere we are, we need to look past the limitations that disability mean and work with their strengths. When Naho first stepped foot in the kitchen, it was quite overwhelming for her. All these new people, faces, things like that. But she settled in very, very quickly. She just loves coming to work. Learning new skills, you know, even with counting and things like that, and, and even reading the recipe, it's an amazing skill uh, for her to do because she knows how to set everything up and um, she just gets in and, and just gets in and does what she needs to do. I think Chris would be really amazed to see where, what is happening now, and especially, you know, with the business and being able to create employment um, because it's something we wanted to do. My name is Pavin and I'm totally blind and I'm with Cookie Project since one and a half years now. I'm a blind baker over here, just making cookies. We help each other and learn different techniques from each other as well. And we have fun and joy and, yeah. I myself am blind, but for me, baking is quite a sensory experience as well. Um, I kind of got involved here last year when um, I came in to help out with a fundraising activity for blind cricket and I've kind of stayed. I was born with uh, autistic spectrum disorder but otherwise known as Asperger's Syndrome. It is a disability of the mind, uh, meaning that I could uh, see things from different perspectives. Who knows? Maybe I might even find a little Mickey Mouse in the mix as well. I don't know why, but there must be something magical about these cookies, because once you have a bite of them, you just can't stop eating them. They must put a lot of love in these cookies, that's for sure. Removing the barriers to, to access meaningful employment that pays a decent wage, yeah. that's the right thing to do, yeah. first of all. But to be able to provide them more than that means that they are acquiring life skills to yeah. better prepare them for future integration into mainstream employment. To be able to give Naho an opportunity to work is really special. It's so rewarding that I can keep supporting her in her career-wise um, and guide her as well, just like her parents, you know, and guide her the right way. It's, um, yeah, it's very rewarding and very special. Good morning, everybody. Morning. Morena. 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 I'm going to tell you guys what the, what the production is that we need to do today, and I want you two, Stacey and Paveen, to talk between yourselves about what you think is going to be the best production team for you both, and uh, we can talk about whether that is the best option or whether we might want to change some. Cool? Car pies? Yep. yep. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I'll see you guys later. Who, who else is over here? Kayla. We've got Kayla. Erin. Erin. David. David. Deacon <laughs> and Donna. That's who we've got here today. Okay. Part of the whole purpose of the Cookie Project is to actually teach teach the bakers to be leaders and to step up. Um, a lot of them never get given that opportunity, you know, as as people to actually do that kind of thing, and they never um, they never have role models to actually show them that kind of thing. Um, so it is important to give them that chance to at least try and think through that process. I'm not that person who's um like to be leader. I'm more of a 
person who likes to be in the background and following somebody else. But kind of slowly getting used to being a team leader. Just for now. Let's get our cookies. So Naho and I go into deliveries, so this way she gets to visit, uh, meet people, um, interact more with the community. OK, let's go. This way, thank you. Let's go. Just being out in the community, meeting more people, saying hello more. Even when we go to events, Naho now tells people where she's from and, and speaks a lot more. So, yeah, to see that, for me, is, um, it's incredible. Yeah. Mainly yours. Hello, how are you? you? Good. 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 And thank you for sharing them. <laughs> the first time Nahu came into the office, Nahu was incredibly timid, and yeah. it's been really nice to see a confidence yeah. grow through everything that these guys have been doing at the Cookie Project. You feel more confident, Nahu, coming into the offices? <laughs> you remember how scared you were when you first came in? And now you just seem so much more confident. It's so good to see. Let's go. Let's go get some oranges, eh? I'll show you which ones, the best ones, the best ones. Let's this one here. See how there's, it's got a little bit of green, but not My hopes for Naho's future is for us to just keep excelling, talking more, um, and hopefully one day actually managing um, the kitchen. Um, what future legacy do I expect? Um, for Naho to have an amazing future, um, always have a job, to be able to just live the life that she deserves, yeah. So having the cookie project um, to leave for her is, yeah, so rewarding to know that she will always be well looked after.